Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Saul van Grenen, aka Mr. VG, and we are now heading into this beautiful chapter of Grade 8 Financial Maths. Today's lesson is specifically going to look at percentages, and I want to look at the basics of percentages and how you can convert them to fractions so that we can use it inside of other chapters. So when we talk about percentages, remember that the basics of percentages is that if I see 30%, it means effectively 30 over 100. If you look at that carefully, that little dashed line looks like a 1. Then I've got a 0 and a 0 at the top. That's actually where the symbol of percentages comes from. 30 over 100. So it's always over 100. So when I look at 25%, it's 25 over 100. Of course, the very important thing you've got to remember is that you are never allowed to just leave your answers as unsimplified a fraction. So I'm going to divide both top and bottom by 10. So at 30, it's going to give me 3 over 10. 25%, I can divide 20 by 25 in the numerator as well as the denominator, leaving me with one quarter. So what if I'm asked to calculate 25% of 40? We don't want to work with percentage and we don't want to work with of. So I'm going to replace the of with multiplication. And 25%, which is 25 over 100, and I'm going to multiply that by 40, or 40 over 1. So if I simplify 25 over 100, I'm sitting with actually a quarter. Remember, we did this simplification earlier. So a quarter times by 40 over 1. So this gives me 1 times 40 over 4 times 1. So I'm multiplying the numerators and the denominators by each other, leaving me with 40 over 4, which is 10. Or, and here some of you guys are going to go, but, 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 so, I don't want to multiply top and bottom, I want to go and do something different. Well, that's 100% fine. You can just as well go and say, well, what goes into 4 and into 40? Well, 4 goes into 4 once and into 40 10 times, which means I've got 1 times 10 at the top. Remember, again, we're multiplying the numerators and the denominators. And then I've got 1 times 1 in the denominators, which gives me 10 over 1, which is simply 10. But that's exactly what we got there. So what I would like you to do is kind of open your mind to say there's not necessarily just one way of, you know, doing, for instance, a multiplication or fraction sum. There's maybe two ways. And the beautiful thing is later on, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be able to use a calculator. Then you don't have to use all of these fractions. But... And this is what I tell my grade 8s every year. If we are going to use calculators, why is it so important for me to then still be able to do all of these processes? And the reason is, ladies and gentlemen, that in grade 10, 11, 12, we are going to repeat these processes, but we are going to repeat them with algebra, so with x's and y's and stuff in them. So then you've got to be able to do these processes where you can't actually use a calculator. So it's important that you learn the principles, not just learn the maths. But where are we going to apply percentages? Percentages, ladies and gentlemen, are going to form the foundations of all the financial maths that's coming up. So first of all, 
we can get test scores into percentages because then you can compare different tests with one another. Also, and most probably the most important one, is interest rates. I'm going to look at percentages with growth and decline or growth and decay. So percentages are crucial actually for going forward. But the most important part of percentages is being able to go from a percentage into a fraction or vice versa. So this is Mr. VG signing out. I hope you're going to enjoy seeing me in the next videos or at least listening to me in the next videos where I'm going to dive into the application of percentages specifically to do with financial mathematics. So have an absolutely beautiful rest of your day, a beautiful evening or a beautiful afternoon. Keep well. Cheers.